She's the queen right here. This, is, me. this is the queen, right? Yeah, she's the queen. All-time leading winner of races for a female trainer in the history. You know, it's an honor. It's something special. But like I say, it's been years and years of hard work. Well, what's the earliest memories? Oh, I have all kind of memories. This, this is uh, the greatest game played outdoors. Greatest game played outdoors, huh? Who was a mentor for you? I've had a lot. I came up around Detroit, and uh, Jack Vanberg was a very good horseman. Actually, Bill Mott and me galloped for in Detroit at the same time. A lot of good horsemen came out of Detroit. All the people that take care of these horses on the backside. That is the backbone of the industry. These are the unsung heroes, the horses on the backside, because it's the people that take care of them every day. And I mean, yes, it's great that we have great jockeys and everything, but they're only on them for less than two minutes. And it's the people that live and die underneath the horse and take care of it that are the unsung heroes. Who's all time favorite trainer for you? There's a lot of good trainers. I haven't really got a favorite trainer. And I feel blessed coming up in Detroit because there was a bunch of good horsemen. I worked 10 years for W.R. Harp. Sturgis Dupoint was there. As I said, Jack Manberg, a lot of good horsemen. And because I started out on the bottom and walked and ponied and galloped and worked for a lot of people, I feel like I've gotten a lot of input from everybody. And you know, what made the old time horsemen and women, for that matter, back then. What made these people so special? They're special people because they lived and died with the horses, just like raising kids. I mean, you spend 24-7 with them. They were a devoted bunch. That was their whole thing. They didn't do anything else. The horses was the only thing they did. And, you know, what do you think the biggest difference in racing today versus yesterday? Well, there's a lot of differences. I mean, we've learned a lot over the years as far as nutrition and vaccines and everything else. But, you know, a lot of it still has to do with common sense and horsemanship. And that's where I think the old timers really had an edge. Well, what makes a good groom, in your opinion? A good groom is somebody that knows their horse. They know the habits of the horse, <clears throat> not just when they don't eat, but they can tell when the horse is acting different. A lot of times that'll make a big difference. Maybe the horse is usually a little bitey or playful going around the shed row on a shank. And if they're starting to get sick or something's starting to happen, maybe they're dull. They haven't not ate or they're still eating the way they do, but maybe their <clears throat> manure is different. So like I say, a good groom knows his horse and knows like maybe he's not drinking as much water as he usually does. And water is very important, especially as it gets hot. And sometimes horses colic because we have drastic weather changes. So if you can catch some of these problems beforehand, then the horse's health is gonna be better. How special is this place? Can you tell this, this is a very special track to me. I've been here every year since 1976. I galloped horses for the first 10 or 12 years I was here. I didn't take out my trainer's license till 86. Who, who's the best jockey you ever seen ride a horse? Oh, uh, there's a lot of good jockeys. And you know, the jockeys, not one jack, no matter how great they are, fit every horse. So you, what a trainer tries to do is match the style of the horse to the style of the jockey. But there is a lot of great riders and a lot of good riders. And you know, which horse was the horse that got you going? There was a lot of horses that got me going. <clears throat> when I got stalls down in Miami, I had a filly named Modern Messy that was a really good on the turf. And at the time, Tampa didn't even have turf. So when she left Tampa and we were shipping down there to run and she started to do good, it's like, here's this girl with a truck and trailer coming from Tampa uh, Infields Training Center to Miami and the horse is doing very good, you know, first, second, first, second. So, you know, as people notice the your business increases, I've always had a penchant for the babies, the two-year-olds, and uh, that's where it got me my start with Stonehenge Farm. And you know, if you could change one thing in racing, what would that be? There's quite a few things that need changed in racing. You know, it's not grown with the industry as far as taking care of the owners, taking care of the breeders. So there's a lot of things to work on. Uh, thank you, good luck. Thank you, thank you very much.